then then I will. All right, get ready to go. I'm going to mute the mics, and then we're going to start. All right. Visit LegalZoom.com to save on your legal needs like wills for $69, LLCs for $99, plus filing fees, and also get access to a network of legal plan attorneys for guidance. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but provides self-help services at your specific direction. Enter discount code TMOS for more savings at LegalZoom. That's discount code TMOS. The following program is brought to you by More Broadcasting. For more information, visit us at morebroadcasting.com. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for AmeriCast, featuring Marcus Serta. Without further ado, let's bring him in here. America's favorite P1 listener, Mr. Marcus Serta. Live from the Green Mountain Studios in Vermont, this is AmeriCast. Welcome, everybody, to uh, a happy new year, the first of 2014 for AmeriCast. It's great to be back. And I've got what I think is going to be an interesting show. In studio with me this week is, of course, as always, Steve Mermelstein. Hey, now. And coming to us direct from Alaska. On the, I had to go as far away from us as possible, Steve, to find this <laughs> guest, Ben Neff. Hey, greetings, guys. Good to talk to you, Ben. And, uh, you know, let me... Uh, Turn that down just for a second because uh, I want to be able to talk to Ben. He's far away. I don't want to have to, him to have to yell at us in order to speak to us. <laughs> but Ben, you know, you reached out to me and said you wanted to be on the show. We haven't spoken a lot off air, so I'd like to get <clears> to know <throat> you a bit. Uh, how did you get to into TMOS? Obviously, couldn't have been from the WTNT signal. No, <laughs> it doesn't reach all the way up here. Um, we. We had a radio station that started sometime, I don't know, around 2001, and they carried the um, Howard Stern show. And that I'd, I'd seen his cable show, but never listened to the radio show. And uh, I'd listen to that every day on my way to work after we got that station up here. And when I'd go to lunch, he would still be on that station, and these, these guys were on. I'd never heard him before, and I loved the impressions they did. That's what made the big impression on me right away. And uh, I became a bigger fan of the Don and Mike show than I was of the Howard Stern show. Yeah. Um, so that's how I found out about him. Howard Stern, to me, was always like reading Playboy for the articles. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he had some <laughs> really interesting interviews, but outside of that, it wasn't... Uh, and I, I know that I'm going to get blasted from some people. I didn't find it as funny as I did the Don and Mike show. The Don and Mike show I went to for absolute comedy every day. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, I, Mike's impressions were the greatest, and I look forward to uh, low-budget Jeopardy uh, the most. I remember the games, the games I loved that they played with, uh, with the listeners, especially, and I've brought this up before, the ass game. You know where they would get people lined up at the drive-thru, and then they would they would place the order and say "ass" as many times as possible and see how long it took before the, the drive-thru person would say, "Please stop calling me ass." Yeah, uh, or a chief. Chief was the other version of that game, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That chief probably came after the uh, n the Janet Jackson nipple incident, mm -hmm. just That's to keep great. it keep it on the keep it legal. Um, so as far as TMOS is concerned, it obviously has changed quite a bit from Don and Mike. What are your yeah. thoughts about the new uh, TMOS, you know, including Oscar, now in podcast mm -hmm. format? How do you feel about it now in comparison to what it was in the radio? Yeah, I love it. Um, at first, I, I was a little concerned. I'd heard of Oscar, but, you know, you barely heard anything from him. Yeah. And, uh yeah, when the show started, it, it was a little rocky at first. It took a, a few episodes to find their legs and really focus in on the funny. And uh, I love the show now, though. It's it's so intimate feeling and also hilarious. It's great. Yeah, they were talking about that again over the Christmas holiday, about the intimacy level of TMOS. I, I don't know if you've had any experiences trying to talk to the guys. I know, mm -hmm. you know, Steve's had 
conversations with them. I've had mm-hmm. conversations with them. They've always been quite open to talking to us, and not just as Omericast people, but even before that. And mm-hmm. um, I always found them to be generous of their time. Have you had conversations with them via Facebook or however? Yeah, through Facebook, I've interacted a little bit with Buzz when he was on the show, and um, a little bit with Rob. And uh, then I did get to go to the Reno show, and I hung out a little bit uh, after that show and got to interact with uh, Rob, mainly Rob and um, Mike at that point. What did you think of the Reno show? It was awesome, yeah. I flew there specifically for that, no other reason, and it was totally worth it. Was yeah. it good just to get into the continental United States to feel like you were part of the U.S. again? <laughs> I always feel that way. It's other people that kind of react differently when I tell them I'm from Alaska. Do you know Chan? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> okay. I, I, you know, I had to ask because obviously the other Alaskan TMOSP one that I know is Chan Richards, who has mm-hmm. come down to Virginia, been to a live show, and actually did some work on mike's house so you know I yeah didn't he do it. some door repair or something something like that yeah he was working on the house maybe some painting who knows but uh mm. i can't imagine that there are that many alaskans in alaska i mean that place is uh, way out there uh mm-hmm. you know your neighbors are you're stuck between canada and russia i mean mm-hmm. how miserable can that be <laughs> it's beautiful country though is it really? It is. It's, yeah. It's, uh, and you, to live here, you have to have a reason that you want to get outside. Like, I love to ski. There's people that live here, and they complain about it, and they just want to live in California, and I tell them that they should move. I mean, or find something that you want to do that's outside, because that's what it's all about. So you're in Anchorage, correct? Mm-hmm. Now, this is the big city of Anchorage, Alaska, and we were talking before the show. You said there was a population there of about 350,000 people. Yeah, I think it's between 300 and 350 right now, and it's about half the population of the state as a whole. And it's over twice the population of the state of Vermont, which is at about 160,000, right, Steve? Something like that. Yeah, so uh, your big city is larger than our state. (laughs) Yeah, that's amazing to me. Well, you know, tell me, if you don't mind, I want to just ask a couple of questions about Anchorage, because I have not, this is one of two states that I have never been to before. I've never been to Hawaii, and I've never been to Alaska. Uh, Okay. If I come to the big city of Anchorage, is there a Starbucks on every corner like there (laughs) is here in the continental U.S.? Yeah, over the past decade, we've picked up Almost every chain and a whole bunch of Starbucks are included. Now, what about food? Now, Steve and I are huge foodies, so we have (laughs) to ask, uh, what's your favorite restaurant up there? The favorite restaurant is probably a local one called Moose's Tooth. It's a (laughs) local brewery and and pizza joint. And they make good brew? Oh, yeah. What's your favorite brew that uh, the Moose's Tooth does? I don't even know him by name, to be honest. I'm not a huge is, beer is, guy. Is there moose on the menu? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get any wild game no. on their menu, huh? No, and actually, you know, that's a good thought. I would think they would do that. The wildest, I guess, is the reindeer sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Why is my sausage glowing? I don't understand. It's got a little redness here that's glowing on the end of my sausage. <laughs> What's what's wrong with this reindeer sausage? Um, well, I, you know, one of these days, I'm absolutely going to come up to Alaska. I really do want to check it out. I have heard nothing but great and wonderful things about it. Uh, Steve is, is a is, photographer. Is it, is, it, is it true that the mosquitoes are about the size of a hummingbird? They're nasty, some, t- some summers especially. Um, but you know what? I think it's probably on par with somewhere like Minnesota. So, I mean, mm-hmm. if you've been there, it's... It's not any worse than that. Yeah, but summer in Alaska lasts, what, two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Some summers, yeah. Um, we had a great one last year, probably two months of nice, good, solid summer. And when was the last time you saw sunlight? Because you only get the, the rays of the sun for only a couple of months out of the year, too, right? Or do well, you have to be uh, further north? In Anchorage, 
Yeah, we're far enough south that, like, right now it's up from 10 to 3. <laughs> 10 to 3. <laughs> Five yeah, hours. That's not too bad. <laughs> wow. A lot of people up there with vitamin D deficiencies? Yeah, you know what? We've got the, those happiness lights that you you put on your counter. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you don't get this SADD, I think they call it, the Seasonal Affective Disorder. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so you guys have adapted to life up there. That's awesome. Well, speaking of snow, speaking of cold, let's <clears throat> head right into a clip from TMOS this week because, of course, Mike is down in Florida. Well, actually, right now he's on his way to CES in Las Vegas, but he's been over the holiday down in Florida, and he called up on Friday to talk about, of course, the bad weather and snow in D.C. with the boys. But the roads were really di not so bad this morning, but yesterday afternoon at about 5 o'clock, it was the kind of thing when I left Julia's school parking lot, my speedometer said 35, and I wasn't moving. Because my <laughs> wheels were spinning, but I Are wasn't getting the traction. Are you Northern Virginia, though? Because you're a lifer around here. You're not a New Englander like me. Oh, you're no. not a tough guy like me. No, I'm me not brilliant and great like weather. you. That's right. The New Englanders that know how to handle this weather, or the people in uh, Virginia that get this weather and go, Oh, my God! What's the what are you going to do? What, what magical do? thing do you do in, in New England that allows an eight-cylinder rear drill drive grab traction? How do you fix that? I uh, drove a school bus, as you know, Rob, in, uh, <laughs> in, a, in a blizzard. Yes, of so, course. I mean, when you've in got the middle the of July. Of, of 24 screaming memes in the back of your yellow transport method, and uh, you have to drive, then you know how to drive in the snow. I will tell you, when I moved to this area, and you boys visited where I'm talking about, the yes. fabulous Willow Lake Apartments yeah. in scenic, beautiful Laurel, Maryland. Ah, oh, the best neighborhood in the world. The problem there <laughs> is if you get stuck in the snow, you can't call anybody because your cell phone has been stolen. <laughs> oh, that's so cruel. <laughs> And that joke probably only sticks for those people who are actually at the live show mm. in D.C. Steve and I know, because we were there, Mike took the boys and did this great tour of the Manassas area, and Mike took them around, and, and they did some photographs, and they went to this old apartment complex where Mike used to live back in the day, and I think at the time when he was living, it, uh, he was working at uh, AVA, or maybe even before that, and while he was inside filming this clip for the live show, he had his cell phone stolen out of the car, <laughs> which was no more than about 100 feet away from him. So, wow, really? Literally right out from under his nose. He was, he was up on the second floor, and the car was down below, and the cell phone got snagged out of his car. Um, but it was a great story. But going back to the weather... I mean, they're complaining because, uh, obviously, D.C. shuts down with two inches worth of snow. <laughs> Here in Now, we live in the valley, in the Champlain Valley of Vermont. We don't get as much snow as they do up in the mountains. But over the last, over the holiday, we've gotten at least, what, a foot and a half, Steve? Two feet? I would say two. Yeah, I at have, least I have at least two in front of my house. Somehow I'm still getting to the store. I'm still getting outside and doing mm -hmm. stuff. Um, now both my cars are front wheel drive. Ben, what about you? What's and, and uh, don't forget all the ice we got on top of that. Oh my God, the ice storm was nuts. Yeah. But Ben, how about for you? I'm sure you're getting ten feet in Alaska. Yeah, I don't know. I think we have somewhere around three three feet so far this year, something like that, maybe more. But for you, and, it doesn't uh, keep all, you inside. It, you guys no. live with it. You're hardy like us New Englanders. So you get yeah, out and deal with it. It doesn't stop life. Totally. It's all about expectation. And we expect to get it. We buy cars that can handle it. And, you know, the, the city has the plow system for it. So you kind of just deal with driving over the snow and the ice and whatever else accumulates on the road. What kind of you car do you drive? Work. What kind of car do you drive? Subaru. Uh, Subaru Forester. Oh, four the wheel. unofficial car of Vermont mm -hmm. in Alaska. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure there's actually a lot of Subarus in Alaska, just like there's a lot of Subarus here in Vermont. Yeah, they're very popular. Subarus and trucks. Yeah. Anything with uh, all-wheel, four-wheel drive um, yep. is, is very popular in these particular areas. But, yeah, you know, Rob owns a rear-wheel a rear <laughs> drive car, and when I go car shopping... It's probably the last thing I look at. Right. Believe me, mm -hmm. I want to have a Dodge Challenger, or I want to have a Chevy Camaro, or I want to have one of these hot rod supercars, but you're never going to take it out of the garage in weather like this. 
No, when I when I moved mm-hmm. up to Vermont, um, I had a rear wheel drive Nissan 240SX, and um, that that didn't last the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a spin out in it? I had a few. Um, it was always fishtailing, and it was just you can't you cannot do a rear wheel drive in, up here. It's just not possible. Ben, ever have any mishaps in uh, in snowy weather? Oh yeah, uh, and especially when you're young and you think you know what you're doing. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've ended up facing the wrong direction, going through an intersection backwards. <laughs> um, fortunately, I didn't hit anything that time. I but did that yeah, once, it, yeah. It happens. I yeah. had a lot of close calls like that with, with that car. When I was, uh, let's see, I was tw- 19 at the time, and I was driving my car. Well, it was a Chevy Impala at the time, rear-wheel drive. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like mm-hmm. it was an old police Impala. And uh, it was a great car in general, but I'm on the I-90 Eisenhower Expressway in Chicago, which at the point that I'm on the freeway, it's a six-lane highway in one direction. And I spun that sucker 180, and I had (laughs) six lanes of full traffic coming at me. That was uh, a very scary scary. and unpleasant experience, but everybody managed to slow down. Yeah, your heart in your throat. Yeah, I uh, I managed to get that sucker around. Everybody saw me spin out, and nobody got hit or anything. But uh, I was able to move to the side of the road, take a few deep breaths, and then get back on the roadway and get on my way. But um, it was one of those lessons learned that when it is when the snow is freshly coming down, mm-hmm. slow the hell down. Don't drive yeah. at the speed limit because you don't know what's on the road. But yeah. Anyway, I, it's it's always funny when these guys talk about it. Oh, and on Facebook this week, a funny comment from Trip Affleck, who said, who ma- who made a uh, a dig at Mike. Figures Mike is down in Florida and nobody at home to plow. You know, to use the snow blower. Yeah, to blow the <laughs> snow. It, it's, it seems like the last couple of times there's been any snow for him to blow, <laughs> he hasn't been in town. He hasn't been around. <laughs> it's just Murphy's Law with that thing. I wonder if the guys have used it while he's been away. There's been no mention of it. I'd love to hear a story of them trying to start it, because at this <laughs> point, he's had it for three years, right, and yeah. he hasn't had to start it yet. So I can only imagine Oscar out there, you know, he jerking his arm out. This is how I see it. Pic- this is what I picture well, if, happening. If Oscar used it, he probably would have lost a foot or or some some extremity by now. I don't think he would lose anything, <laughs> but I think he would probably end up needing some sort of surgery on his rotator cuff <laughs> as he was jerking on the core trying to get started um, because he's not as young as he used to be. <laughs> yeah, he'd probably throw his back out again. Yeah, something of that nature. Well, it was a great holiday uh, for the boys, it sounded like, because obviously Mike went away. Um, Rob can't help but be happy. Oscar (laughs) gave some mixed signals about how his holiday went. I'm just going to assume that being with with a woman like Shannon, it was just fine. Um, And I know that his family likes to get together, and he enjoys getting together with his family. But... Let me ask before I play this clip, Ben, listening to the Christmas party, Mm -hmm. were you at all surprised that the first person to show signs of alcohol abuse (laughs) in episode one was Oscar Santana? No, no, uh, not surprised at all. Shortly there followed in episode two by Rob Spiewak, Mm -hmm. and somehow Mm -hmm. Mike seemed to maintain some control through almost all three shows. He did. That sur- he surprised me. Yeah, I was a little disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, did you? What did you think of the holiday shows? Oh, I thought I, I liked them. I thought they were great, and it was it was a blast hearing, um, you know, Oscar uh, so uh, smashed and and and, <laughs> and that clip they played on Friday show of. Uh, you know, speaking to the mic, speaking to the mic. That was <laughs> that was a great <laughs> montage, was, was it not? Yeah. 
Uh, and I did <laughs> notice that, but that is always his thing. Yeah. But yeah. in mm-hmm. that concentrated form, <laughs> it was beautiful. And, and it's kind of ironic because, you know, he traditionally has always had the worst mic technique himself. <laughs> yeah, that is, I noticed that too. He's always telling other people how to get on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> ben, what was your favorite part of the holiday shows? Uh, I, I'd probably say the, the swap. The Yankee Swap or, you know, White mm-hmm. Elephant Exchange or whatever. The Yankee Swap, to me, was a... It seemed like... And yes, you're right. It's entertaining, and it's entertaining for this reason, because it was a total cluster F. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's funny to listen to them be frustrated sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of being frustrated, here's a clip from episode three, show number three of The Holiday Party, where they attempt to interview... Officer Jerky. <laughs> it's been a long time. I mean, I've on it. You've been on the show periodically, but you've never been uh, on the show like we've discussed many times in this kind of relaxed atmosphere. So, how would you rate the year 2013 as far as activity? Was it uh, was it a better year than others? Was it a worse year? Was there more crap that you had to deal with? Was it more dangerous, less dangerous? Uh, characterize 2013. What as was a like? crime fighter. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about my Shut sex. up and stop being! I meant that as a legitimate... I swear to God, I'm going to bitch slap you! Oh, that'll hurt. Rob Spiewak. Oh, my God, those big mitts. God almighty. You could knock someone out. So was it tough? He'd have to get out of his chair first. Thank you. Yeah, that's not going to happen. And to be honest, Mike has a lot of strength, but he has dainty hands. <laughs> oh, my God! You just calm him off the show. That's right. Shut God, up, that sucks. Turn your microphone down. Down, not off. He's okay. Too, he's too funny to turn it off. So how about, like, <laughs> Can't let that go. You gonged like... Rob off. I've never seen that happen. Mm-hmm. It took me three dates to get it from Gary. <laughs> That was one of the most <laughs> glorious moments. Rob pushed it just far enough to actually a gong. That was beautiful. And again, the boys, Mike, <laughs> tried to do an honest, try to have an honest conversation and not be able to finish a thought, mm-hmm. not be able to finish the conversation that he's trying to have, because, of course, mm-hmm. Rob and Oscar are all over him. That happens in the regular show, but here, because mm-hmm. they're so intoxicated already, it's even juicier. It's even mm-hmm. better. Um, yeah. yeah. And when they've got a guest, Mike wants, you know, he's like, he wants to look good, doesn't want to, and they're being checky over there, you know. And not just any guest. Business. This is Officer Jerky. I think for me personally, I was really looking forward to hearing Officer Jerky. I will say this, even though Officer Jerky really didn't get into some in-depth conversation in cop talk, he (laughs) was extremely funny, throwing out the zingers at Mike, at Rob, and uh, the same thing with Officer Q-Tip. They were both hilarious, Mm. but... We didn't get to have that cop talk conversation that I was kind of looking forward to. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was with Mike on that. Yeah, when you bring it up that way, that totally makes sense. When I was listening, I was like, "Get out of the, get out of their way, and let them talk." I know. I wanted to hear a bit about it. I would love for both Officer Jerky and Officer Q-Tip to come back to have one of those honest conversations, like they've had with Officer Meg, mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. what they do, and especially now that we know that both Officer Jerky and Officer Q-Tip work in the D.C. in D.C. proper. I mean, if there's a cop who's got to deal with a lot of S on a day-to-day basis, it's probably a D.C. cop. Definitely. Um, And especially balancing out the different levels of jurisdictions, let alone the different types of incidents that they're either plagued by on a t- typical day-to-day basis or the threats and the possible threats that come with being in D.C. Mm-hmm. So I-, I was really looking forward to it, but at the same time, you can't, you, you can't be ashamed at the comedy goal that is gonging out Rob Spiewak. <laughs> ben, would you call yourself a uh, Rob Mob member? I I think I would be close. I don't. I'm not active enough to be a Rob Mob member. I don't think. What do you think you have to do? You think there's some sort of secret <laughs> handshake? Uh, what do you think you're missing out on? I guess I feel like I'm not active enough on Facebook and social media, and that kind of seems like it's a an important criteria to a Rob Mobber. Maybe, maybe. I think you just have to think that Rob is the funniest of the three. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I guess I'm, I, I I tend not to pit them against each other and rank them. Um, I love them all for their, their own reasons. So on that criteria, I guess I'm not. I I could say I am not, I am a Rob Mobber, but only because I love them all equally. So I, I think he's hilarious. So it's just isolate that. I guess I'm a Rob Mobber. Ben is running for office in Alaska. <laughs> um, vote now. Vote often. Uh, <laughs> but uh, any other moments out of the Christmas party that really stood out for you? I think one of the conversations that I really enjoyed was the conversation with the wives. Especially when Carrie comes in. And Carrie was sober this year. I remember mm-hmm. when she wasn't sober. Mm-hmm. She's very funny either way. But mm-hmm. obviously she is a perfect pairing for Rob because she can really dish it back as he dishes it to her. Yeah, she can definitely throw some barbs in there. And Carla was very funny, too, and Shannon plays along. I think Shannon, it sounds like from the... Oh, by the way, since I mentioned Shannon... Shannon! I, I haven't been able to play that in a while. Um, I, I think that because of her distance and that, and I'm not saying this this isn't a derogatory thing she is actively chosen to remain distant because Oscar does his part on the show and she doesn't necessarily want those lines to be crossed and mm-hmm. you know uh, Carla has been involved because it's in her house and Carrie cho- chooses not to be involved as much as possible because she's got other things on her mind as she put it I believe it was uh because she spends too much time crying in her off time uh, about work. But, you know, I can understand, especially when you work in retail, that the holidays <laughs> suck ass. But, yeah, that's right. Didn't she say some? Wasn't there a, uh, a little bit of chafing between her and Shannon because Shannon's skinny and likes her job? <laughs> yes, there was a comment made there. Matter of fact, uh, Oscar did a little vignette uh, where he did... So, I, I don't remember which story he was trying to play off of, but yes, it came around to uh, Carrie had taken, or I think in his words, stolen the s- soda machine, the oh, soda screen from <laughs> Shannon. And uh, then there was some comment made about, you know, you're skinny and you actually like your job, <laughs> which is not. <laughs> Carrie is a very attractive voluptuous, curvy woman, uh, but she hates her job. So, uh, you know, I can see where she would look at somebody like Shannon, who is, uh, you know, stick thin and can bend in ways that normal human beings shouldn't bend, looking at the videos. Not that I watch the videos that often. Um, (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Not that I have them bookmarked or anything, um, but she... (laughs) She obviously, I, I, it's no surprise that there would be some women who would be a little jealous of a person like Shannon, who is a very attractive young woman. Mm-hmm. But I, I'll, I'll shut up now, because <laughs> if my wife ever hears this, she'll just Before get Before you get me. in trouble. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, let me grab that shovel from you. Because I don't think my wife knows that I have those videos bookmarked. Um, <laughs> let's take a quick break. When we get back, I want to talk more about some other stuff going on, more broadcasting. Obviously... Uh, we, uh, we're into episode 14, 15 of It's Mickey now. I want to talk about some things that have come up on It's Mickey. It's a very interesting show. It's, um, how do I, how do I put this? It is Art Bell Radio on more <laughs> broadcasting. And, uh, we'll talk more about that when we get back right here on Omericast. Do you love your iPhone? Do you love your iPad? Do you love your Android? Do you love your Nexus 7? Did you play Atari? Did you program the TRS-80? Do you love technology? We all do. And more importantly, do you love entertainment? Yes. And if you do all those and above, or whatever I'm trying to say, you should listen to Tech 411. That's right. Tech 411 show with Oscar Santana and Todd Moore. Bring it. Let's try it. More Broadcasting. For more information, visit us at morebroadcasting.com. Welcome back to AmeriCast. And as I was saying, uh, we're into double digits with It's Mickey, the show with Mickey Coachella and Wendy Townsend. 
Yes. Sounds okay. right. All right. We'll go with that. She's at <laughs> Wendy Stars on Twitter. I know that for sure. Uh, but I've actually been enjoying the show. Now, my wife was here earlier, and she was listening, and she was not nearly as happy when she started to hear this clip. i got to be very careful with this, because here's where I get myself in trouble. Ladies, until you've put a helmet on, shoulder pads, the pants, the chin strap, a mouth guard, and gone out there and tried to tackle a guy, say maybe even 175 at top speed, until you've laid a shoulder into that guy, the smallest guy on the team, and tried to bring him down, shut up. Nobody takes anything you say seriously when you start talking about football. Okay, pick a color that you like and a player that you like and root for them. Nobody cares that you know that it's third and nine and we're probably going to be in a pass situation and that why did we run in this and we should have sweeped or thrown into the flat and tried to dart back. Just be quiet. It's annoying. It is so annoying. Ladies, we let you watch the game. We want you to feel involved. Okay, but don't overstep your boundaries. What are your boundaries, you ask? Talking about anything other than refilling the food and the beverage containers. Now, let me just say this first, that any clip I grab from Mickey's show especially, you have, you have to understand there's more to it. Because I, I grab these clips and sometimes, like this one here, my wife only heard this clip. And she gave me five minutes of an earful of, oh, my God, what a misogynist pig, uh, blah, 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 blah. And she, by the way, she hates football. So I don't know what she's complaining about. Now, Ben, let me ask you, before the show started, we were talking a little bit about football. You're a 49ers fan. Um, mm -hmm. Probably had to just go with the closest team possible since there is none in Alaska. So you're Well, my folks are... From California, so I was in, I was uh, indoctrinated by my grandfather, actually. Gotcha. So, um, is your wife into uh, football? Uh, she didn't like it at all when we first met. <laughs> so I've gotten her into it a little bit to where she can watch a game with me. Yeah. But uh, she's she, I, she wouldn't watch it on her own. How do you, in general, how? Do you feel about the comment that Mickey made? And let's not, you know, not this does not include your wife. Your answer will not include your wife. But okay. in general, if you're talking to other, if you're in a group of people, and there happens to be women there, and football mm -hmm. talk comes up, and a woman decides to interject her viewpoint on a football team, do you even think about it? Not really. It, it more seems like... I. How much do they know about football is what occurs to me. And you, you yeah. can kind of tell, are they just BSing or not? But as far as if you're a woman or not, I personally never played football like in high school or anything. So I feel free to let my opinion be known, and I don't know what the hell I'm talking about for real. I, so. think, I think that's my feeling, too. I mean, I did play some football. I've played football as a kid. Uh, but in general, as long as you understand the rules, understand the game, I think you can make the com you can make whatever comment you want about the team. The only thing that yeah. tends to annoy me as I've gotten older is the the comments that people make about teams when they go my team or we right. won today. Like where were uh -huh. you? What, <laughs> when did you catch the ball? What did you yeah. do for the team? Where is your paycheck? Uh, yeah, those are the comments that tend to drive me a little mad. Uh, when people start heading off in that direction, but mm -hmm. I, I catch myself doing it sometimes, even. But yeah, I know what you're saying. I, Mickey's comment, I think, was really coming from the aspect of listening to female commentators on television, because some of them really do seem to come off like they don't really know anything about football. Mm -hmm. They're there. They ask some very basic, simple questions. One of the comments that he made was, you know, like just before. When halftime is over, and you always have that commentator on the field who grabs the head coach, and she's like, okay, well, you guys didn't uh, really catch a lot of balls in the first half. What do you think you're going to do in the second half to make it better? Yeah. Well, how about I catch more balls? You know, it's like, 
what kind of stupid question are you asking? What are you going to do to turn this game around? Uh, score yeah. more points? Um, sometimes it just doesn't feel like some of the questions, some of the things are coming from the commentators on the field, I totally mm-hmm. get, uh, are a little ridiculous. And they're coming from people who either don't understand the game or don't have enough information to really ask a decent question. And yeah, I, didn't Mike make a similar comment during the baseball playoffs? I think he might have, actually, now that you bring it up. Yeah, yeah, I recall him complaining because, you know, you run up to a dude who's out of breath and, you know, ask him a really stupid question about what just happened or whatever. He just want, wants to get back into the uh, locker room where his teammates are celebrating about the win. Well, think about, you know, when you're watching the news, the morons who get people on there, um, you know, there's a person, they've been held hostage for three days uh, with a gun to their head, they get released, and the first question out of some reporter's mouth is, so how did you feel? Right. I asked my pants, how did you think I felt? Um, <laughs> you know, it's just not, sometimes there are just questions that I think they should just either stay away from or you, just don't go there. It's it's not worth it. it you're not, filling airtime isn't that important. Take us to somebody who knows something better and... Uh, you know, the know something. I get more interesting commentary from the guys in the studio, especially when they decide they want to play tag football. From some of those guys, uh, they they make they do some funny stuff in studio, especially when they're throwing a football around. I have seen one football hit a camera once that was made me laugh. But outside of that, speaking of TV and making TV better, Mickey also made a commentary concerning some. It's it's a real clear observation, and I absolutely agree with his observation about human nature when it comes to the things that we want to watch. And then at the same time, he takes it to a place where, how can we make some of these really stupid shows even better? With the Winter Olympics, you got the luge, which is somebody laying on their back on a piece of wood with a metal blade under it going 7,000 miles an hour. And when that, remember that dude flipped out of it and was killed? Now, look, it's sad that he died. It's terrible. I don't want anyone to die. I'm just saying it does add, it makes you want to watch it a little more when there is the death element. And if you think that's horrible of me saying, shame on you. Because you'd know if somebody said, hey, watch this. There's a 50-50 chance this guy's going to die right now. You can't not watch it. Maybe you don't want to watch the actual moment of death. But y- y- it's hard to walk out of the room. You've got to know what's going on. That's how I feel about the Winter Olympics. Um, you know, the downhill skiing. I mean, you're on two pieces of wood going 7 million miles an hour, cutting in and out of slaloms, I think they're called. And at any moment, you can fly and hit a fence at that speed. Uh, That is good television. I'm just saying, you know, all these shows on TV, people go, this show sucks. I'm saying take some of these shows that you think suck. The Kardashians. Put them on a double black diamond hill and make them do the show on their way down. There's a chance somebody dies. That's something I want to watch. Maybe it's me. Maybe that makes me a horrible person. I don't think it makes him a horrible person. I think that makes him a typical human being. I think we are, we do it all the time. I Look at the number of people who are into wrestling, Rob Spiewak. Look at the number of people who are into, um, what, is the, what is the new wrestling, the, the new extreme? UFC. Yeah, the UFC, the extreme fighting, um, ultimate fighting. Mm-hmm. Look at, uh, you know, so we're talking about gladiatorial-like games. Now, boxing has been there for years, and it's always had a strong fan base. You know, like, like Moon Girl says, you know, people only watch NASCAR for the accidents. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, why do you watch hockey? You watch hockey for the fights. You, why do you watch the Olympics? Now, you watch Olympics for close calls and things to happen. Um, I find baseball boring unless I'm at the ballpark because what could possibly go wrong? (laughs) I mean, a guy twists his ankle going around first base. I mean, it's just, I love football because of the fact that there's physical contact, there's strategy. It is, it's a very complex, complex organism as a game. Um, And I think that if they continue and I, I can, have a long discussion about how the rule, the new rules this year have changed the game and made it, you know, 
let's make it tag football. And this has led yeah. to a lot of guys not actually tackling, which drives me nuts. Um, yeah, yeah. you see them getting up and hitting their shoulder pads, trying to explain how, how I made this hit and how it's okay. And you're like, this, this is what this game is about anyway. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is about, and the injuries are still happening. It's funny because I was reading a statistic the other day, and they were talking about they've made some new rules this year uh, about the head, you know, to deal with head injuries, to deal with more significant injuries against wide receivers um, and against quarterbacks. And what has happened, we still have as many injuries, if not more, this year than in any previous year. It's not changed very much, except for the fact, and this is just me as a viewer, and I don't know if you've noticed this, Ben. I know that Steve doesn't because he doesn't do sports, but I, these guys don't tackle. They don't wrap their arms. They throw their shoulder. They throw themselves in the air, planning to, like, I don't know, hit them with their shoulder pad and bounce them out, out, of, out of bounds versus actually wrapping their arms, trying to get these guys down on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed a lot more of that, like, human missile-type tackle. Yeah, and I watched it this last week. I can't even remember which game it was, but there was literally, and I'll use your, your words there, there was three human missiles that could not stop this tank from running 40 yards into a touchdown. They clearly hit him with their bodies. They could have put their arms out, but by doing so, they, I don't know, they've just gotten fearful of actually making a significant tackle because of these new rules. And I think it's changing the game in a way that's negative. Outside of that, it's still one of the reasons why I watch football. I want to see people... I don't want to see... I agree with Mickey. It's not about watching people get hurt. But it's about the physicality. It's about people getting in people's faces. It's about um, making significant plays. And yes, people are going to get hurt in the process. Uh... We, as human beings, have always enjoyed this type of sport. And mm -hmm. so I don't think that... So I think what, what Mickey is saying is accurate in the way that we respond to it. Uh, I couldn't... I could care less if the Kardashians were on a double diamond, you know, run. But <laughs> I think we would probably watch a lot more of this stupid television if it probably had more risk involved. That's for sure. Yeah, if there was some chance that Honey Boo Boo would go flying off the screen and, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, like a giant rock come flying through the house or something. If, like, every episode she were to be on a trampoline with none of the protective sides on it, and she would have to do all of her interviews on this trampoline, yeah, just for the chance that the trampoline would break or she would fly off the side. No, I totally understand. I'm not advocating yeah. for uh, for hurting children. I'm just saying that... I think yeah, maybe her mom deserves to be on the trampoline more than her. Really, that, I don't know that there's a trampoline that could support her. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, you know con continuing with uh, it's Mickey this week. Mickey made a an interesting stop this week. He had to do a interview at ninety eight Rock, his old radio station. And on Friday's show, he actually took a significant amount of time to talk about his stop at 98 Rock to promote uh, his comedy show this uh, last Friday night. And you could tell from listening to Mickey that it was an emotional moment for him to go back to 98 Rock. If you have any familiarity with what Mickey did at 98 Rock, being there for 11 years, um, he left there because he needed to for personal reasons. And going back there, there was going to be some emotion felt. And here's Mickey talking about actually somebody that he wanted to thank from 98 Rock. And, you know, Russ would talk over the words. These were all things that, like, people would say to me later. And they're like, you talk over the words? I'm like, yeah, guess what? I learned that from Russ. It was hilarious. And, you know, I, I, driving away today, I really thought about Russ a lot. Because, like, the whole thing had come full circle for me or full cycle, however you want to say it. And it all went back to that very first afternoon when I was in there with him. And he just looked at me and he's like, you know, the most beautiful things are the mistakes. And, and that stuck with me to this day. And I do the podcast this way. I'll go off on a tangent and not finish a story. Um, my last program director, Dave Hill, who I saw today, made it a point to say, you know, 
I've listened to your podcast, and you'll sometimes start a story and not finish it. You know what? He's right, and 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 he's a hundred percent right. And I just leave the listener like, well, what about the other story? And I can't say that I'm I'm smart enough to say that I do that on purpose because I certainly don't. But I think it's just my whole approach to it that I'm. I'm sitting down with you guys now doing the podcast for an hour. When I did the mornings, it was four hours. And I was like, okay, the way I did it was I, this was four hours of my life that I was going to share with you. And I was going to share all of it with you. I was going to share the, 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 the greatness, the horrible parts of it, the mistakes, the, the, the brilliant moments that only being in the moment can create. And, uh, and I really have to thank Russ Motler for that. It, it was a very touching, if you listen to him talk about his time at, at 98 Rock, and it leads into this thank you uh, to a guy that, that he looked up to. But it also, the reason I played this clip is that I think it plays into a conversation that we can have about TMOS just as well. And it is brought up, I believe, on the Don and Mike show many years ago, that one of the things that the guys liked about it is that it was a human show. There were mistakes made during the show. A button was misput, mis, <laughs> mispushed. Um, there you go. You know, somebody was hung up on an accident. Uh, anything could potentially go wrong, but it didn't mean you stopped the show or you acted like it didn't happen. You, you're human. Everybody is human, and so you just play with it. And mm -hmm. I think as we listen to whether it's It's Mickey, Rob and Joe, or TMOS, which we've all, you know, we all come from, this love of TMOS, mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons is because the show is human. It's so human. Mistakes are made every day. Uh, we were talking earlier about Mike just trying to get a word in edgewise or ask a question, and the guy's not letting him because that's the level of ball busting that's going on. But it's not <laughs> as though Mike says, look, cut, edit all that out. Stop it because I'm trying to do a serious interview. No, they just run with it. And they let us listen in. And so we get to be these flies on the wall that hear these conversations. And I love it for that. Ben, your thoughts? I totally agree. It's It makes it feel so accessible. And like you said, like you're there, like you're a part of it instead of, you know, uh, making it clinical and, and too professional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost. Yeah, it's a real conversation. You're you're listening in on someone's real conversation. Before. You're not listening to a script. I, I think mm -hmm. it is probably the difference. Steve, how about you? And, and another thing is like how um, you're always wondering, you know, what's going to distract uh, Mike today? You know, is it gonna <laughs> totally be, is it going to be a garbage truck outside or something, and he's going to go <laughs> haywire about? You know, it, it's it's uh, it's it's real life. And I think we talked about that on the last mm -hmm. Omericast because it was it was uh, slipped out or it was shared that in 2014, apparently the boys are looking at building a studio outside <laughs> of Mike's home. And, what, and my biggest concern was the distractions will become less. Right, right. You know, my <laughs> only hope is is that it's in a little glass house on the corner of a major intersection so that we will continue to get that level of entertainment that we've come to enjoy. Ca careful, yeah, what will happen to gonna... uh, the, the characters of Frankie and... Yeah, um, exactly. Beluga. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, what's going to happen? Mike will not be able to yell out for Carla again, or the intern, <laughs> mm. um, because I assume they're going to be in a box somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the setup's going to look like. But... Yeah, we're going to miss some of that, or somebody ringing the doorbell at the wrong time. Um, we can only hope that Mike will leave his phone on still, so that we, can get, we can get those happy moments when the phone goes off at the wrong time, and it's a bill collector or somebody like that. Um, but I, I, it is, I, Mickey hit it on the head, and I'm glad that he learned that lesson so many years ago from somebody that he looked up to. I'll say this, in my radio career, which is not anywhere close to what these guys have done, I was always taught to do it in a straight, formatic way. Um, I will say that most of the teaching that I had over the years was to read almost like in a newsman's voice, with a newsman's style, very monotone, straightforward, and if I were to do a read... 
the read had to be perfect. You couldn't mess with it. Mm-hmm. And if I was doing a morning show, it was the same way. I had pre-conversations before the mics were open to decide how the conversation was going to go, where we were going to go with it. That way everybody knew what was going to kind of happen versus allowing the organicness of the people in the room to just make it happen. And that's what I love about TMOS, and I think you guys, it sounds like you both agree. Mm-hmm. 100%. All right. Well, uh, last but not least, Mickey teased something that he is attempting to put together for 2014. I think it's a really interesting idea, and if it happens, I'm hoping that what it also means is that we get to see TMOS out on the road a little bit more. Here's Mickey. Um, after the first of the year, hopefully announcements on our first more broadcast comedy show. What? Just have to get the permission from the big boys to do it. Um and I think, it, you know, it's something we can do in different markets and uh, have a blast. Mm-hmm. That would be fantastic uh, to get Mickey, Rob, and Joe out doing their doing a comedy road show. Mm-hmm. I don't know how Joe's going to pull it off because he's the guy with the full-time job. <laughs> uh, I think Mickey's got people to run the, the vape lounge while he's away. But uh, <laughs> Rob's a professional comedian, so that's what he does. So if they decide to... Do a few road shows. That would be awesome. I would hope that along with it, we would get to see TMOS on the road with them. Mm-hmm. Maybe in Anchorage. How about that? <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Um, I, I kind of see them being a little further south, probably Reno again or something. But well, didn't yeah, they, they decided talk- to make an Alaska trip, that would be great. Didn't they talk about doing an Alaska cruise? They did. Uh, I, I took it with a grain of salt. Um, cause you know, Mike will throw out ideas and then the next day think, what, what was I even talking about? But um, <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> it would be awesome. Uh, have you been listening and, 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 and Ben, I didn't ask you this at the beginning. Have you been listening mm-hmm. to it's Mickey or the Rob and Joe show at all? Have you checked them out? I haven't had an opportunity to hear Rob and Joe. The only, I, uh, experience i've had with them was their little interjection to the uh, christmas party um i did listen to uh, the first three episodes of it's mickey and the first two you know just by himself were um i could see where he was going with it but it definitely got better once he had a partner um but i haven't i, I haven't listened to the newer ones well, it was announced on the last episode. It sounds like Wendy is going to be the regular co-host of It's Mickey with Mickey. Uh, because mm-hmm. as other co-host, she has a work. And my brain is going blank, so I apologize to her for not having her name right at, at the tip of my tongue. But she has a work conflict that is going to cause her not to be able to participate as often. Uh, but Wendy's been great. And I think the show is getting better show after show. And that's what I expect. And Mickey mm-hmm. is getting a good feel for it. I think he's getting a good get- feel for the format. As I said earlier, I think when you look at the whole lineup of TMOS, you've got these three guys who bust balls on a uh, Monday through Friday. We absolutely love. This is the core of more broadcasting. Mm-hmm. Now you've got the Rob and Joe show. So you've got two best pals, uh, two comedians, and they bring a whole different element because they're talking about different aspects of life than the original three. So still funny, but bringing something new. Now you've got It's Mickey. Now Mickey is also a funny guy, and as you've heard from the clips, he can be controversial, depending on how much of it you listen to. He can be thoughtful. He can be funny, but... I think that probably the thing that keeps bringing me back is what I said earlier is he's the Art Bell of more broadcasting. (laughs) Because this is the guy who believes in UFOs, Bigfoot, you know, conspiracy theories and all that. Oh, really? And so he's always talking about them. And uh, now I'm not saying that I'm a believer or disbeliever. I would love to have this conversation with Mickey at some point and we we can get into it. But... I think that it just brings a whole new aspect to more broadcasting. It isn't just three funny comedy shows. They really have their own different angles, and I think they're at least worth checking out, and I recommend to people that you at least check it out. If you checked out It's Mickey at the beginning, check it out now uh, if you stopped listening to it, because it, it sounds like a different show today 
than it did at the beginning. And it's only going to get better. As we've heard from other shows that have been on more broadcasting, including this one right now, <laughs> I think today it's better than it was the first one I ran. The guest that I had on my first show, top-notch, excellent guest. The host sucked. He was <laughs> awful. Uh, but today he kicks ass, and that's that's all I'm going to say about that. So, well, that that goes in hand in hand with the way the TMOS developed as well. So I agree, and looking at the last, you know, we're coming. We just hit four years with TMOS, and with mm-hmm. that, look at the wow. major transitions that have happened on the on the Mike O'Mara show, um, and we're down to these three guys, and it was. It's kind of funny when it was brought up about the uh, when Rob was or Oscar was reading the letter from that <laughs> guy because they were reading that listener letter of sixteen paragraphs, and he he was reading that one piece of it, and he was like, "Those other guys," um, but we're down to these three guys, and the show still holds its own, holds its own because at the end of the day, these three guys play off each other so well, and they really are the core of the group. Um, and that's not to diminish anything that anybody from before. It's just a matter of when these three cats are on, the show just rocks. Uh, yeah, the dynamic is really improved, I think. Uh, and like I told, like you said, I totally agree not to diminish any previous uh, um, uh, efforts that uh, people had given to the show, and that I really appreciated, and I and I miss and. Um, that I I wasn't sure how the show might move forward, uh, just the, the core three, but the yeah. dynamic has really been great. I, I absolutely agree with you, mm-hmm. and I look forward to more shows. I look forward to this next week. Uh, ben, are you an electronics guy? Um, I use them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not really a techie per se? Not per I'm I'm PC friendly. Uh, but I'm not, like, I don't dig into the guts very often. Yeah, but coming into this next week, the boys are out in Las Vegas. They are going to be broadcasting from CES, the Consumer Electronics Show. I know that the guy that I'm sitting across right from right now, Steve, is so jealous <laughs> slash so excited to hear the show from that floor. Uh, you know, Steve, I, I talk ha- about I, I had a ticket to go, but I didn't want to sit on that long flight what are you <laughs> kidding know, me i know it's just i i take your ticket why don't you give me the ticket <laughs> I've been i'll to, go been to vegas twice this year and, and last year and i just i just didn't want to do it again but you um, could have given I, it to me <laughs> i'm sorry i, I would have gone really yeah <laughs> actually it's not trying i don't think it could, uh, can transfer by the way you but. didn't get me anything for christmas you bastard <laughs> that could have been my christmas present <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's transferable, but um I've been Don't in, I been look like a Mermelstein? <laughs> I can make myself look like a Mermelstein. I've been I've been to uh, CES once before and it is a uh, very um interesting and fun uh um conference and especially what Well, there's like it, 800 booths that you would walk around and covet all over, I'm and, sure. And what what's even more fun is the the um, the behind the scenes stuff, the invites to uh, like a lot of the companies, the vendors yeah. will invite you to to a room f- to do demos, and um, I think that's even more exciting because you see stuff that they're not even showing on the star on the show floor, so it's really really neat. And you had a ticket and you blew it off. It, you could have gone out there, flight. seen it all. <laughs> Hung out with the boys. They're yeah, doing a meet when, and greet. When I decided I wasn't going to go, like I didn't know that they were going. They, they they hadn't announced that they were going yet, so it was, you know, disappointing afterwards. That I am so disappointed in I you, know, my young I lad. Uh, well, I, I know that it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be mm-hmm. interesting, Steve. We've talked to you about what you think is probably most likely going to happen with TMOS at CES because when you bring Mike O'Mara. <laughs> The tech head, in quotation marks, <laughs> to an electronic show. The big question is, will he get his Facebook fixed? <laughs> I think that's the number one question. The number two question is whether or not Michael Mara will be at a booth and cause a major power outage. <laughs> I think that's also like you know, you know. And what's really going to be funny is I was just I I, I kind of hope Oscar you know videotapes some of it you know and. Um, you know, gets gets uh, someone demoing a product to Mike, and Mike is just you know powering down and 
tuning out, and you could just see him distracted by the pretty lights or whatever else is going on. <laughs> well, one of the things we learned over the over the holiday when they were talking with the gentleman from CES is that not only did these guys get hooked up with going to CES, they're actually set up like. Fox, mm -hmm. ESPN, or whoever, uh, you know, a bunch of the major networks that are going to be there, they're going to be in a similar booth-like mm -hmm. setting, like a major network. That sounds cool. And so I'm almost disappointed these guys are only going to put together an hour and, a, you know, hour and 20 minutes podcast. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. like to see them do a lot of content out of there. If nothing else, give me another DVD. I'd like to see Tech Four and One do mm -hmm. a bunch of shows out of there, a bunch of interviews. Yeah. Um, and, and Todd is going, right? Todd is going, but Oscar said that he's lined up a lot of mm -hmm. private meetings and things of that nature. I'd love to see a good five Tech Four and Ones come out of this particular mm -hmm. show. Ben, are you into Tech Four and One? I am. I love it, uh, and it seemed, that seems like a natural fit. I guess I kind of assumed that was going to happen. I don't know if it will or not. I, I'm just saying that I hope that it has. They've not spoken word one about whether or not there will be a Tech for one, one while they're there or whether or not they're going to wait till they get back, if they're going to do more than one. As I said, the only thing that I know right now is that the boys are going to be out there for seven days, and I should expect that we get six shows, five mm -hmm. regular shows and a bonus show out of it. But there's so much material that could potentially happen when you've got, again, as I said, Mike O'Mara and electronics in the same place. Right. Um, <laughs> and then we'll see what happens when Rob and Oscar are trying to plug it all in. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Uh, well, you know, you know one, like, I, I'm just hoping, you know, they all come back with, like, uh, Samsung uh, watches and or Pebble watches. And <laughs> so there's going to be even more opportunities for distraction. <laughs> and Google Glass. Yeah. yeah, so they so that all three of them come back looking like douchebags <laughs> <laughs> with all their with all their gadgets and such. Um, but a little techie talk, real quick, before we're out of here, Steve. Mm -hmm. Out of CES, what rumor wise or whatever, mm -hmm. what do you think is going to be the hottest thing coming out of CES this year? It, definitely wearable tech and um, location aware. Um, devices and like I think that's that's going to be the biggest thing that's going to start happening. We're going to start seeing a lot more electronics that are um, become location aware and, and and not just like when you think of GPS. You know, I don't want to be found, but more to like the inch. Like when you are in a let's say let's use a um, an Apple Store for example. Yeah. And, and you walk into the Apple Store and it's going to know your phone's going to know um, that you're looking at the MacBook. Pro, yeah, that, and it's going to send you some information on that right on your phone, and you can do the order and that type of stuff. And we're going to see a lot more from more companies, um, this location aware technology, and um, and the wearable technology, you know, watches and and Google Glass or other things. There's going to be a lot more stuff in that arena that that everything's communicating with each other, and even cameras too. You know, a lot of new cameras that are coming out are. They have they run Android and they have um, sharing all, all the sharing um, apps in them and um, they communicate with your phone you know through through yeah. through Wi-Fi and NFC you know so like so the NSA just, can follow me more yes I know <laughs> <laughs> but like you know you, you take a picture and it's gonna know your phone's right next to you and it's gonna transfer it right over to your phone you know like that type of stuff you're gonna see a lot more communication between your devices so that it's easier. Um, to share your photos or whatever it is yeah. you're, you're doing. And photos are your big thing. Mm -hmm. You have been taking an S load of photos <laughs> over the holidays. I have been, yeah. Because you're a, can it, can it be said? Yeah, sure. Okay, you're a Samsung, we'll call it play tester. <laughs> they sent you a camera with all the goodies and attachments, and you've mm -hmm. been taking photograph over photo, after photograph, yep. trying to see whether or not this new camera, which is not out to the general public yet, mm -hmm. is is actually a good camera and uh i'll share with everybody where they can see your photos that you've been taking it's uh, through your twitter feed i'm sure yeah yeah twitter um vt photo g um be one place um, or on uh on um on uh 500 pixels um 
boy, I can't remember the URL, so I'm, I'm not, not going to All right, we'll it. get you to post it yeah. on Facebook sure. or on Omericast. Yeah. We'll get sure. that information yeah. out because the pictures you've taken are absolutely beautiful. Thank you, thank you. And uh, I, I highly recommend, if you, if you love photography, Steve is an excellent photographer, and he's been playing around <laughs> with this brand-new camera and taking all kinds of pictures. No, no ladies, though. <laughs> Lots of landscapes. Yeah, they, 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 they specifically want me to do Vermont iconic stuff, you know, so... Um, so lots of covered bridges, the mountains, yeah, yeah. snow. Barns and, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm, uh, my goal this year is to uh, photograph 100 barns. There's some attractive girls here in Vermont. Can't you put one, like, next to the barn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I do do that, but I can't do that for them. <laughs> <laughs> he has his secret portfolio stash somewhere. <laughs> Um, ben, if if people want to reach out to you, if you don't mind, if if you're okay with that, how would people find uh, you? Well, there's Facebook. I'm friends with you and Steve and uh, the boys on Facebook, so I'm easy to find that way. Ben Neff N E F F. Um, that's the easiest way, I guess. All right. Well, you know, everybody, please say hello to Ben and thank him for coming on to Americast today because. Ben, I thank you, and it's been great to get to meet you and, and get to know you a bit and uh, share this conversation. I hope that you'll come on AmeriCast again sometime. Well, thank you, Marcus, uh, likewise, and you as well, Steve. Thank yep. you. Thanks. All right, guys. Well, we are out of here, and uh, next week, uh, as my wife reminded me, I told Will Johnson he can come back on the show next week. <laughs> So I, I apologize to everybody in advance, but uh, Will Johnson will be in studio with Steve and I. We will also have another guest on the phone line to talk to. So watch our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Omericast. Also, uh, follow our Twitter feed, at Omericast. Right now, the way that I have our Twitter feed set up and our Facebook set up, if you want to know right when a TMOS is ready for you to download... Uh, on your iTunes, on whatever your favorite podcast app is, follow those feeds, either on a, on the Facebook page or on Twitter. Twitter is the most accurate. Uh, you will get to know the moment it's available. It's the best way you can do it. At Omericast, go there today and hit follow. I appreciate all the support from everybody. We'll talk to you next week, next week right here on For information, visit us at morebroadcasting.com. for an occasional special, an occasional uh, episode, but not as a regular Friday event. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I'm extremely disappointed for two reasons. One, it's my favorite music show because I've learned so much about music listening to a show. And secondly, where's my outro? I've got no more outros <laughs> because he's not doing them anymore. I, I did put a little hint in the comments and said, you know, I'd love if you'd do a custom one each week for Omericast. Uh I doubt he will, but I loved the Rob Spiewak show, and I'm really sorry and sad to hear that it's gone. Um, but uh, you know, I, I am sure that uh, the the boys, Steve's got to do what he's got to do for KCJJ, um, and I hope that if nothing else, we find some way to get the Rob Spiewak show back. 
Uh, I know that from a licensing standpoint, doing it as a podcast is near impossible mm -hmm. um, without some major expense. But, um, Ben, I, I know that you mentioned before I hit the record button again, you hadn't heard this news. Give me your thoughts. Yeah, no, I, I didn't know about that, and that is disappointing. Um, it, you mentioned maybe some special shows, and at least that's good. I love the uh, holiday special, and uh, and maybe one one silver lining might be more turntable burn and flame throwing shows. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. What about um, you, Steve? Yeah, yeah I, I'm going to miss it. I, I, I enjoy listening to it. You know, it was one of those things I... I really look forward to just having it. And, it, you know, when I was working full time in the office, I would just have it in the background mm -hmm. and I would do everything. I would actually block out my schedule <laughs> you know, uh, so that I could be in my office and try to get some work done. But I'd have it in the background. I'd listen to it. And again, like I said, I've learned so much about music just listening to that show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's such a music file. Absolutely. And he is. I have listened to things that I would not have listened to without his influence mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's not stuff that's played on a typical radio station. And DJs these days don't give you interesting factoids. Right. It's a mm -hmm. concert date or who they're sleeping with or who they're not <laughs> sleeping with or who, who Chris Brown hit this week. And so much of it is just, you know, like a autoplay, you know, it's not even, you know, no. pre-recorded clips and about nothing. What radio station yeah. have you ever listened to? Classic rock, mm -hmm. top 40, any radio station you've ever listened to where the DJ says, you know what, I'm going to give you this minute clip of Paul McCartney, no background vocals, no instruments, this is just his voice, listen to this. Mm -hmm. And you hear it just because he's teaching you and, and he's trying to bring to, your, bring to your attention that these artists, uh, they're not, these aren't made up. You know, these people are really talented individuals. And so he brings you those factoids and he plays those clips. And even if it's a funny clip of Elvis laughing his head off because of the guy, <laughs> was he bald? If I can remember correctly, he's either bald or he's got something weird going on with his hair. Yeah. I don't remember now. But, you know, where do you get that stuff? But occasionally on TMOS. But really, you got it every week from the Rob Spiewak show, mm -hmm. so I'm very disappointed. But uh, I wanted to make sure that I got that in on this week's show so that we talked about it. And uh, well, Hopefully they'll f he'll find a way to keep it going. I hope so. If nothing else, you know, do a little private show for people. I'll tune in for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I'd be okay with that. Uh, I won't yeah. tell anybody that he's playing music and publicly displaying it. <laughs> 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 but I'd right. love to hear it. So. All right, guys. Well, thank you again for uh, extending the show a little bit longer for me so that we can talk about it. And, uh, again, talk to everybody next week. Bye-bye, everybody. All right, guys. Uh, recording over. I am out.